Good morning. The church asked me to make a couple of announcements before Mass. Many thanks to Father Francis from St. Bernadette for covering all of the Masses this weekend. Also, masks and hand sanitizers are available by all the doors of church. And mark your calendars for the Knights of Columbus Chili Cook-Off and Cornhole Tournament on February 5th. It's going to be a lot of fun. We have flyers at the doors, and I think some of the knights will be handing out flyers if you're interested. Thank you.
Our gathering song will be number 503, Come to the Feast, number 503. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I warmly welcome you all to this Eucharistic celebration. Today we celebrate the feast of the baptism of our Lord, and so let us pray that we may be inspired to live according to our baptismal calling. In this Mass, let us pray for friends and colleagues who may not be well, that God may grant them the grace of good health of mind, body, and spirit. We know that our priests are ill-disposed, and we pray for them too. Let us call to mind our sins so we may prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal a contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, from mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us life everlasting.
us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who when Christ had been baptized in the River Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved son, grant that your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expedient. Indeed, she has received from the land of the Lord double all her sins. A voice cries out, in the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain. The rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all people see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain. Zion, herald of all of glad tidings, cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judea, Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by a strong arm. Here he is reward with him his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all, and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires, and to live temporarily, justly, and devoutly in this age, as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people of his, as his own, eager to do what is good. When the kindness and generous love of God our Savior appeared, not because of any righteous deeds we did, had done, because, but because of his mercy, he saved us through the bath of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. We at whom he richly poured out on us through Christ Jesus Christ our Savior, so that we might be justified, justified by his grace and become heir, heirs in the hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Luke. The people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. After all, the people had been baptized, and Jesus also had been baptized and was praying. Heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. First things first. I, I am not Davis, the seminarian. When we're processing in, Someone was calling me, Davis, Davis, and I wouldn't respond. So John said, no, that's not, that's not him. I am Father Francis. I visited this parish way back in 2015, in August, when Father Dean Danos was the pastor here, and Father Simon Peter was his associate. I stayed around for three weeks, and I went back, and I'm back to stay a little longer this time working in this diocese. Until yesterday, I was the associate at St. Bernadette in Homer because I am moving to Holy Cross in Morgan City. 
I am sorry for you because you are going to be straining your ears to try and understand what I say because of my African and Ugandan accent. But if there's something you don't understand at the mass, at the end of it, I'll be at the back of the church so I can try and make myself clearer. As I said at the beginning of the mass, we have spent about 12 days celebrating Christmas. And today, as we celebrate, the baptism of the Lord marks the end of the Christmas season. That also marks the beginning of the ordinary time. In fact, today is the first Sunday of ordinary time. We are getting into the season of green, the season of growth. Christmas, which started with a silent night and a child in a manger, today as the ends, ends with a loud voice from heaven and God declares Jesus Christ as his beloved son. And he does so at this wonderful occasion of the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ. You and I know that Jesus is God, he was holy, he did not have sin, so why would he get baptized? Because baptism is for you and me, who are born with the original sin. Jesus Christ gets baptized so that he does the will of the Father, because that is what the Father had willed him to do. But he does so in order to, to teach us a lesson of humility. If he who is God can humble himself to associate, to identify himself with the sinners, how about us who are actually sinners? How much more should we appreciate baptism? Remember, we, we are ending the celebration of the mystery of the incarnation when the world became flesh in order to dwell among us. Jesus wishing to be one of us, one with us in everything except sin. So even when he goes into baptism, he would like to show you and me the way. But most importantly, he goes into baptism because the Lord himself affirms that baptism is necessary for salvation. In John 3, verse 5, we read, Amen, amen, I say to you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. And indeed, when Jesus got baptized, he consecrated all the waters of baptism so that when you get baptized, when I get baptized, we immediately become the sons and the daughters of God. The Holy Spirit descended upon him to anoint him in order to proclaim the good news to the poor, to announce liberty to captives, sight to the blind, and the year of the Lord's favor. The year which has just ended was a very difficult year. We are just a few year, a few days in the new year. And so we pray that the ministry, public ministry of Jesus Christ of coming to announce a year of the Lord's favor to us indeed will be felt in this year which we begin. This marks the beginning of the public ministry of Jesus, which he is prepared for through baptism. Out of the baptism of Jesus, gets an affirmation as the beloved son of God. It's my prayer that the baptism of Jesus may remind us of our own baptism because our dignity as followers or disciples of Jesus Christ depends on the extent to which we live our baptismal calling. In our baptism, we were formally given a name and welcomed into the family of God's people and the children of the church. 
and I'm so happy for you this morning that as children of the church and children of God, we gather to listen to our Father in heaven so he may feed us with the word but also with the flesh, the blood, and the body of his son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Lovely prayers when we got baptized were said over us in order to, cons to consecrate us, in order to make us holy people. We were signed with a sign of the cross as a mark of Christ's love for us. Water was poured over us as a symbol of cleansing. Indeed, by our baptism, we were cleansed of the original sin. But water is also a symbol of life, and in baptism, we are given a share of undying life of God. At our baptism, we were anointed not just once, but twice. Firstly, to have strength for the inevitable struggle against evil, and secondly, as kings, queens, prophets, and priests, we were anointed with chrism oil to turn us into ministers to our immediate community or witnesses of the Lord in the world. We were covered with a white garment, the outward sign of Christian dignity. We should therefore strive to make our bodies as pure and as holy as that white garment signified. We were given a candle lit from the Easter candle, which is Christ himself, signifying the precious light of faith. And in baptism, God calls us from darkness into the wonderful light of his Son, Jesus Christ. When we were baptized, the Holy Spirit descended upon us. And as he did, the voice comes from heaven to declare us as sons and daughters, beloved ones of our heavenly Father. And so by your baptism, by my baptism, we are invited to participate in the public ministry of Jesus Christ in the world by building the kingdom of God. From the spiritual point of view, baptism is the greatest thing that could have happened to you and that can happen to you because baptism is a foundational sacrament. Baptism is required for you to be able to celebrate the rest of the sacraments. Baptism unites us with Jesus Christ. Baptism incorporates us in the redemptive death on the cross. Baptism frees us from the original sin. Baptism will cause us to rise on the last day with the Christ, as we read from Romans chapter 6, verse 4. Baptism is a covenant with God, and so we should keep that part of that covenant which belongs to us, especially the baptismal promises. In conclusion, there are many vocations out there, but the most important vocation common to all is the vocation we received at baptism. A vocation to be disciples of Christ in word and in deed. We should always strive to celebrate our baptism anniversaries. Back in Africa, we celebrate so many things, but rarely our baptism anniversaries. I would like to encourage you that we should celebrate our baptismal anniversaries because this was the day we were born as children of God. And each time we enter a church and sign ourselves with a holy water, we remind ourselves of our baptism and recommit to live accordingly. Tomorrow the gospel will be telling us this is the time of fulfillment. Indeed, let, us, let it be a time of fulfillment as we launch into the ordinary time to live according to our baptismal promises.
the Lord be with you. of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, was substantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For us, Saint was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this day, the heavens were opened and the Spirit descended upon Christ at his baptism. In prayer, we ask the Father to, to unseal the fountain of his blessings upon the world. For the church, like her Lord, the beloved of the Father, that his favor may always rest upon her and his spirit overshadow her with the truth and power. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those entrusted with the work of the government, that they may serve the cause of right and strive to establish true justice on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who have become lukewarm in their faith, that the spirit given in their baptism will rekindle faith and love in their hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For ourselves and our community, that we may eagerly follow Christ's call at our baptism and establish true justice on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For our sick friends and relatives and the bereaved and our special intentions in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the departed, whose memory we recall, that the power of God's grace may bring them to the fullness of glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Almighty Father, by our baptism you adopted us as your sons and daughters. Hear our prayers through that favor which rests on your beloved Son who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Number 798, baptized in water, <coughs> 798.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, far more the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our <laughs> salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan, you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us, and by the spirits descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ, your servant, has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. <laughs> O Lord, and all you have created that <clears throat> rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith.
Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, our spouse, blessed apostles, the glorious matters, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and shelter on our bishop, the order of bishops, and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Say our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, to say to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share that sign of peace with one another.
the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called the banquet of the Lamb. For those of you joining us on social media, please pray with me and act the spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Number 823, Behold the Lamb, 823.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Mighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Message ended, go in the joy and peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you for coming to Mass. Thank you for being a wonderful congregation and have a nice weekend. Thank you. Closing is 343, Joy to the World, 343.